Welcome to the Bentley Tutorial Series for Engineers Without Borders USA. This presentation covers the basics of modeling and water gems. I will demonstrate basic modeling functions such as uploading a background file, manipulating units and formatting, and finally editing data in both the properties box and within flex tables. At the beginning of the tutorial, you can have your background image or file ready for use, and at the end you'll know how to upload the file and manipulate basic features in Water Gems. As you may know, Water Gems is available as a standalone program, and also as platforms and other applications. Water Gems can be executed as a platform, for example, with an Esri ArcMap or Autodex AutoCAD application. The interoperability ensures that any of your Water Gems models are portable and will get along with those other applications. You won't have to worry at all about wasting time or losing functionality if you're transferring between those applications. Water Gems is a powerful program with a lot of complex modeling options, and once you've mastered the basics, you can really increase your project's efficiency. This tutorial series is designed to help you climb the learning curve so your chapters can most effectively apply Bentley modeling software to your EWB water supply projects. Now we'll go into Water Gems to explore some of the basic Water Gems features. This training assumes you have downloaded and installed Water Gems. Once you have it open, you can create a new project and save it. First, you should set the unit system to be used in your project. You can use U.S. customary units or the international system with metric units, which is more typical for international projects. To change the file's units, go to the Tools drop-down menu, then Options, navigate to the Units tab. You can change the units individually for each parameter, or choose U.S. customary or SI at the top. We'll stick with U.S. customary. Notice at the bottom right here, Water Gems displays the X and Y coordinates of the cursor so you can easily view the location of anything in your drawing pane. To begin creating your model, you can add GIS data to provide a setting for the design. In Water Gems, it is possible to manually import data or you can import existing GIS or CAD files. We'll start by adding a background image. To view the background dialog box, go to View, then Background Layers. Make sure the box next to background layers is checked. Click on the arrow next to the page icon, then New File. From the drop-down menu next to the file name, you can see the different possible types of background files like DXF or JPEG. We'll first add an aerial image from Google Earth. The Image Properties box appears after you select the file. You can set the transparency here, which allows for multiple layers to be visible simultaneously. If you're uploading an image to an existing design, or need to resize or reposition the image, you can adjust the XY coordinates which are displayed in white boxes in the bottom right. We'll also add a DXF file, which is a universal sharing format available from any CAD program, such as MicroStation. This DXF file was provided by Michael Sanders in the Northeastern University chapter of Engineers Without Borders. It was actually used in their water supply project in the village of El Chaguite, Honduras. This file was generated from survey data collected by the chapter during an assessment trip. Once you have your background layers open, you can move around the drawing pane by clicking on the pan tool icon at the top, or by holding down the scroll wheel on your mouse if you have one. To see the full background layer, you can zoom in or out by scrolling up and down, and the Zoom Extents button brings your background file into full view. You can draw a box around any section you want to zoom in on. Sometimes our background maps are larger than our areas of interest, as is the case here. You can create one or more named views to save the current view of the screen so you can instantly return in the future. Navigate to the view you would like to save, we'll use this. Open up the Name Views dialog box. Create a new view and give it a descriptive name. You can turn the background layers on and off by checking the boxes next to their names. Next, we can review labeling. Water Gems automatically labels different features, and the labels can also be defined by the user. User-defined labeling is optional, but very convenient for referencing elements in a network. For example, in a pipe network, the labels could be tied to a pressure zone or be a reference to a map sheet. To start, we'll go to the Tools drop-down menu, then Options. In the Labeling tab, 
you can see the default prefix for each element. You have the ability to change the default letter for the various elements. Before laying down any features, you can set default parameters for different elements so that each new element has your chosen properties. To do that, let's go to the View drop-down menu, then Prototypes. You can set prototypes for different elements. We'll add a new pipe prototype. Double-click to open the property editor for the prototype. Let's make 8-inch PVC pipes the default. Find diameter in the list of properties. You can type in the value here, and note the units are displayed. You can select the pipe material by clicking on the ellipsis to the right and opening the data library. These come loaded on the program. You can expand the libraries to see the list of common pipe materials. We'll choose PVC. The material properties that will be assigned to this pipe are displayed to the right. Once you hit select, Water Gems will assign the pipe these properties, including roughness coefficients. You can see the PVC attributes updated with values from the material library. Now every new pipe added will reflect these properties. If you look at the layout toolbar, you can see the main system components. Click the button near the top for pipe elements. Using this tool, elements will be added when you click in the drawing pane and will be automatically connected by pipes. The default element is a junction. You can right click to change the element from junction to anything here or finish by clicking done. To add elements or nodes separately, use the other buttons on the layout toolbar. To split pipes, you can click on the area you want to add the new feature. A prompt will appear asking you to split pipes and you can hit yes. Each time you click, the selected element will be added. To put a bend in the pipe without adding another element, right click and choose bend or you can hold down control and add bends that way. To input data for an object, first select the cursor, then double click on it to open the property window. For pipes, you can change the length, diameter, elevation, and more. The pipes will automatically be scaled based upon the length in the drawing. To assign a specific value, change the user defined length property to be true, then you can type in the desired length. Units are listed next to each parameter. You can right-click on units to change them from the properties grid. To view real-life data for the next section, I will upload the Water Gems distribution model used by the Northeastern University chapter who I mentioned earlier. Their chapter created this distribution model to test their improvements to an existing drinking water distribution system. The final design included over 10,000 linear feet of pipe. We just went through editing elements individually by accessing the property grids. An alternative is to use flex tables to quickly and easily change the properties of multiple elements at once. Click the flex tables icon or go to the view drop down menu and select flex tables. We will look at the predefined flex tables for pipes. White boxes are editable and yellow boxes have values calculated by the model. To view an element listed in the flex table, select it, then you can zoom to it by clicking the zoom icon at the top. See the element highlighted in red in the drawing pane. The data in the flex tables does correspond with the property dialogs for each element. You can see if you change the diameter of one pipe here to 3 inches, the value automatically updates in the flex table as well. Similarly, you can undo that change and see the update instantly. This should give you confidence as a modeler that the system is always representative of the values you assign it. Now, let's say your project requires a change in the model of all the 1-inch pipes to 2-inch diameter. Find the diameter column and select the entire column. Right-click at the top and you'll see you can filter or sort by different elements. We're going to go to Filter, then Custom. This will bring you to the Query Builder. It is possible to filter by any of these listed properties. In the Label column, find Diameter. Double click on it and see the text displays below. Set your parameters. We want it equal to one inch. Press OK. Now only the one inch pipes will be listed in the table. Right click on the selected diameter column and click Global Edit. Notice you can set them all to a certain value or you can apply one of the other operations. We'll change it to two inches. You can see that all the elements in our filter list have been changed to the designated value. Make sure the filter is reset to display all diameters. To edit a certain group of elements, you can choose filters in the flex tables, or you can select pipes from the drawing itself to make groups. 
To do that, make a box around the group you want to edit, right click then edit group. The table will only display the pipes that were part of the selection. Another way to label features is with batch relabeling. It helps you organize your system into groups with easily identifiable names. For example, you can rename this group of pipes. Go to the Label column, right-click, then select Relabel. You can append text or numbers as a prefix or suffix. We're going to renumber these pipes to Zone 1. This is another way to relabel, as we did from the Tools drop-down menu, then Options. It gives you an idea about the depth of the options in Water Gems. There are a lot of nooks and crannies like this, some may call them gems, and if you spend a lot of time with the model, you can really become a power user. To review your updates, sort the entire Flex table by diameter, and check the labels. To review the material covered in this tutorial, we'll go through some assessment questions. First, a user can upload which of the following file types to Bentley Water Gems? Either an Esri shapefile, a DXF file, a Windows bitmap, or all of the above. And the answer is D, all of the above. Number two, true or false, if the user does not individually label each element, each element of the same type will have the same label. If you remember in the tutorial when we first lay down a pipe or any other element, it is originally labeled by water gems, so this is false. Water gems will automatically assign labels. And number three, a fill in the blank, blank are used for viewing and editing the properties of multiple elements at once. You can remember we edited properties in the properties box and also in flex tables. So the answer is flex tables. They're used for editing multiple elements at once. Thank you for watching and please join us for the next EWB tutorial.